Hello, this is Michael Kiley from creativegrowth.coach. We have an exciting new museum in Southern California, the Cheech, which is the Cheech Marin Center for Chicano Art and Culture in Riverside. And it's in a repurposed mid-century library that has been wonderfully restored. LA Times art critic Christopher Knight visited around the time the new museum opened and described it as handsomely renovated 61,000 square foot former library building in the city center. No other museum represents a substantive permanent exhibition focused on any critically important facet of the region's bountiful post-war art history. What is Chicano art? Riverside's new Cheech Marin Center offers an open-ended response. The Cheech is the Riverside facility has inevitably been nicknamed given its celebrity origin in the art collection assembled over 30 years and donated by comedian actor Cheech Marin is a first. Chicano art is offered in concentration, serious, playful, and in sprawling range of visual vocabularies some more successful than others, all worth taking in. Here's the man himself in front of one of the many paintings he donated to this collection. And it's sort of definitely got a Picasso influence on the painting. And then on the right side is a sheet of lead pressed into the surface of the canvas. The patterned concrete screens that form the front wall of the Cheech Museum are called the Founder's Wall and are inspired by the noble Nopal or prickly pear cactus, known for its resilience, adaptability, growth, and culinary and medicinal use. A passionate collector, Cheech Marin, has spent the past 40 years assembling one of the most robust and influential collections of Chicano art. With dogged determination, Marin challenged institutions to reckon with their historical exclusion of this art. In doing so, he boldly asserted that Chicano art must be central to any understanding of American art. So this is not the Cheech, but a museum designed by the same architect who did the Cheech. This is the Marciano Art Foundation, which was one of my favorite museums for two years and unfortunately closed due to some political issues with the patrons. So here's a rendering of the Cheech Museum, even more interesting than it was a joint project between Cheech and the city of Riverside. The design was done by one of my favorite architects, Kulapat. He also did, as I just mentioned, the Marciano Art Foundation in LA. Kulapat Yantraset's Y architecture firm in Culver City has emerged as a go-to designer for cultural institutions. The building offered by the city was a former library with its mid-century architecture undisturbed by later trends in style. Here's the showstopper piece, a two-story tall lenticular painting with modern images blended with Mayan or Aztec images. And I don't know if you have seen lenticulars, but they're the photographs that are 3D. So as you walk past them side to side, the images morph in kind of amazing ways. One of the first things I saw was this painting, which knocked me out and also looked very familiar. I knew it was from an album cover, kind of searching for what that was. The painting is called, forgive my Spanish pronunciation, La Pistola y el Corazón, and it's a Los Lobos album that was an incredible album. So as soon as I figured that out, I took this image of the painting and I listened to some of the songs on the album. 
The painting was done by George Yepes, a childhood friend of the musicians in Los Lobos, and he painted a haunting portrait of two embracing skeletons, one a macho type with his heart exposed, the other his bride gripping a gun. The painting says so much about the intensity of the music, said George Yepes, who conceived the image in a summer before the demo of the album was released. The thickness of the paint, the richness, the rough strokes, the guy choosing between the love of this woman and his crazy life, that's the power of the music. At the time, Yepes was a part-time muralist and full-time accountant. The cover has inspired nearly as much praise as the music the band Los, Ob Los Lobos has earned. Do I really need to say much about this a masterful painting, the calligraphy, the composition, the graphic power, the draftsmanship? Uh, this is called uh, Chano Latino by Chaz Bojoquez. And it just, again, just kind of took my breath away. I knew this was going to be a great set of paintings to spend some time with. So I had pretty high expectations about this museum, but after an hour and a half looking at these paintings, I was overwhelmed in a very positive way. Uh, everything, it's beautifully selected work, precisely placed, beautifully lit, clean spaces. What more can you ask for? Here's another shot of the ground floor gallery. Uh, and then upstairs, they have a temporary collection that I'll talk about in a few slides. I love the powerful color of this piece by Patsy Valdez. It's called Room on the Verge, and the painting was done in 93. And that has got to be a takeoff on one of my favorite films ever. Women on the Verge of a Nervous Breakdown by my favorite filmmaker, Pedro Omoldovar, which was made in 1988. And then there's this powerful painting by Carlos Amaraz, ironically titled California Natives. It obviously has Impressionist, Expressionist, even Fauvist influence, but taken to a whole new level. Another Carlos Amaraz painting, what beautiful color composition somehow reminds me a bit of Richard Dievenkorn. So the imagery is beautiful, but the title is Sunset Crash. So it's about something lethal. Talk about graphic power and perfect composition. This painting by Carlos A. Martinez is called Sylvia with Chicago Letter jacket. This pyrotechnic explosion of color and light is by Adan Hernandez and it's called La Bamba and done in 1982. And going back to one of my other loves, this is the original really kind of almost crazy uh, staircase in the what was library. And these are dark maple, really carefully shaped geometric guardrail. And then these panels appear to be hand glass, hand cast glass panels in a sort of cream gray and gold. I'm so glad that piece didn't get ripped out.
The second floor of the museum is dedicated to the De La Torre brothers retrospective, and they are masters of lenticular photography, but I'll show a few slides of all the other types of things that they make. It's, it's pretty amazing. So you walk into this first gallery on the second floor and there's truly remarkable lenticular images, uh, a Ferris wheel of art objects that's being slowly cranked by a chain drive, this totemic vase idol made with mostly cast glass. So a lot of different levels of mastery from these two artists. So hopefully the motion intrinsic to the lenticular image will play, although it's not nearly as dramatic as it is in person. One last image of the De La Torre brothers. There are dozens of works in the upstairs galleries. Um, the mastery of so many different media is remarkable. Again, I just had an incredible first visit to the Cheech Museum. I'm planning to go back in a week. Uh, thankfully, it's halfway on my commute from where I live in the desert to where I stay part-time in San Pedro. And next door to the Cheech Museum is the original Riverside Art Museum, which is the same ticket if you want to go through that. I didn't, I didn't go this time. I was kind of had had my uh, over-the-top uh, art experience already. Uh, the other side of the Cheech Museum is the famous uh, Mission Inn of Riverside, which was a luxury hotel somewhat in the style of Hearst Castle. And three blocks away is the University of California Riverside Museum of Photography, which is also full of uh, very interesting images.